time. Uh, first, we'll hear from Jim Green. Jim. Yeah, thanks, Catherine. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, for making the time to to listen and stay interested uh, in in where we're headed with Artemis One. Um, I, I had two things I wanted to talk this morning. Um, the first is uh, I brought up after the uh, on the news conference what we're trying to do with the range um, <clears throat> and our and our FTS batteries and the retest requirements that the range has for us. Well, I think there are some things that uh, I probably didn't state clearly enough in the first one. I, I want to make sure everybody knows that the range has been a great partner in this for us. Um, when we talked after our attempt on Saturday, uh, we were just kind of in the formulation stages of uh, of what our plans were. Um, and General Purdy and, and his team have, have just been fantastic at um, – listening to where we want to go and giving us uh, giving us their thoughts and us making sure we understand their requirements and concerns. Um, we, we did submit our waiver package to them uh, to get our, our, our retest requirement out there. Um, after meeting with them several times, again, they've been very uh, gracious and understanding of what we're trying to do. I'll reiterate to the fact that, that our job is to live to their requirements. It is their range um, and and it's our our job to to comply with their requirements. So so we will do that. Um, having said that, we, you know we're we're trying to plan a path forward. If if we're allowed to uh, to uh, extend our battery retest requirements on the flight termination system. Um, so to that end, we we've asked for a a couple dates on the range um, to to support our planning. Um, you'll hear about the tanking test uh, in a few minutes from. Uh, John Blevins and, and Mike Bolger, um, but our, our requested dates we we uh, put on yesterday were the 23rd of September and the 27th of September. Um, those dates uh, were, were, were I mentioned on Saturday that we're trying to work with other NASA programs and obviously other users on the range as well. Um, the the 23rd we we picked uh, we're trying to deconflict with the Dart impact. Um, the, the conflict there is use of the deep space network. Um, we we want to stay outside of, of their, uh, I'll say, lockdown of, of the of the DSN, um, which is why we picked the 23rd, so that some of our critical events, if we were fortunate enough to get the waiver from the range and to actually launch on the 23rd, our critical requirements post initial launch would fall on the other side of the impact of DART on the 26th. Um, so that's that's how we came up uh, with the 23rd, and then the 27th of September keeps us um, on the right side of uh, Dart or on the back side of Dart, I should say, and then in advance of uh, some other activities on the range that are scheduled for the 30th. There's actually no conflict with uh, anything on the 27th, um, and then we're looking at a third date, but that is a constraint with Crew 5. I mentioned that briefly. Um, we're just trying to work with the Crew-5 program, and obviously uh, Kennedy, um, from a consumables perspective, with other activities on the range with replenishment times for the uh, for the GN-2 between launches. So uh, we'll, we'll hold to those two dates. We'll continue to work with our um, great partner in the range um, as they evaluate the, the realism and, and feasibility of our uh, waiver request. And certainly if they decide that is not the right thing to do, we obviously will support that and, and stand down and, and look um, for our next launch attempt. Um, but we, we still will press with the tanking test. Uh, 